ليكن يومك للشعب ودادا ليكن حبك للأرض مدا للأرض مدا ما جوج يا جوج غوغا ميغوغ they are going to penetrate this wall but the time they are going to penetrate this wall is during the end time during that time Yajuja and Mayajuja are going to commit so much atrocities. They are going to spread across the land and corrupt the land. Allahumma anfa'una bima allamtana wa'alimna ma yanfa'una wa zinna ilma. This is going to be our final episode on the stories from Surah Al-Kahf. And here we'll be talking about the story of the great man himself, Dhulqarnayn. Dhulqarnayn was a great man, a powerful leader in his days. Some scholars, historians, they mention that Dhulqarnayn, he lived between the time of Isa and Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Dhulqarnayn literally means a man with two horns. Not that he has the horn of an animal, but it's an attribute because he rules from two different sides of the world, different sides of the world, the east and the west. Now, a lot of historians, they refer to this person we are talking about to be Alexander the Great of Macedonia. But they are wrong. Alexander the Great of Macedonia was not a Muslim. Dhulqarnayn was a believer. He was a Muslim. A righteous Muslim during his time. Dhulqarnayn, Allah blessed him so much with power. He had everything and controls from the east to west. Nothing much about the Quran in history, but what was revealed to us, Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Kaf that and they are going to ask you about the Quran. Tell them that you are going to reveal it to them. Now, Zulkarnain. He embarked on a journey one time, and as, a, as he embarked on the journey, he reached a particular community. This community, the people there were oppressed by their leaders. Upon getting to the community, Zul he corrected the oppression on that land. He punished those who are oppressing people, and also he helped those who are oppressed in that land. Then he kept going. As he was going, he reached a particular community. That community, people there, there is no civilization at all. They were not wearing any clothes, and they have no shelter. They are just living like animals. In the forests. Look around upon saying this, it liberated that community, that town. It taught them how to wear clothes, how to make their clothing by themselves. It also taught them valuable knowledge of agriculture and also carpentry. And it taught them how to make their houses, their shelter. It liberated them in that community and it kept going. As it was going far east, as scholars mentioned, he got to a place where he could barely understand the language you were speaking in that place. When he got there, they were talking to him and he could barely understand. So he needed a translator to translate to him what these guys were saying. Eventually, you know, he understood what they were saying with the aid of translators that they are suffering in that land. 
And there's a particular set of tribe called the Ajuja Majuj, causing all sorts of atrocities and corruption on that land. Zulkarnain, they asked Zulkarnain to come and help them because obviously they saw a powerful king, a powerful ruler. He has the ability to liberate them, to help them from those Gog and Magog, the Ajuja Majuj. They even offer Zulkarnain so much wealth. Zulkarnain said, I don't need all this. What Allah has given me is more than all this. Now, Zulkarnain said he's going to do it for free. Then, he asked them to go bring iron. They brought iron and they had two mountains in that town. The mountains they serve as a kind of entrance for you coming into that town. He found a way of chasing Yajuj and Majuj, the tribe of Gok and Magog. He chased them out of that town and he used the iron, a very large iron metal, to demarcate from each wall, each size of the wall of the mountain. He now asked them to bring molten copper. So that the barrier is going to be very, very strong. They brought the molten copper and they added the molten copper to that iron. And that barrier became so solid that Yajuj and Majuj cannot penetrate into the land of these people again. Majuj and Yajuj, Gog and Magog, they are going to penetrate this wall. But the time they are going to penetrate this wall, is during the end time. During that time, Yajuj and Majuj are going to commit so much atrocities. They are going to spread across the land and corrupt the land, commit so much atrocities and commit so much nuisance on the surface of the earth. That is the sign of the end time. So, um, Zulukarnain has been the one who saved the world from Yajuj and Majuj until the end of time when they are going to penetrate that wall. Yeah, Juj and Majuj, a lot of scholars talked about them. They talked about their shape. They talked about how they look, their tribe. But I believe that this is a knowledge of the unseen. What we need to understand is that what? There are a particular set of people, set of beings that are what? That are committing so much atrocities during that time named Yeah, Juj and Majuj. And they are still coming back to the surface of the earth to commit all sorts of atrocities before Isa. Jesus, the son of Mary, will eventually overpower them and kill them off. So, that is the story of Zulukarnain that we know about Zulukarnain. The lessons that we have to learn from the story of Zulukarnain is that despite giving him so much power, he never corrupted the land. He was steadfast, he was faithful, and he was righteous. And he never monopolized. He never monopolized the knowledge Allah had given him. Imagine him teaching those people he liberated in his second journey, teaching those people and collecting from them. He gave them the knowledge for free. So that is a, that is, that is a, a lesson to all of us that whatever knowledge Allah has bestowed upon us, we should make sure that we are doing because of Allah. So now, in the series of Suratul Kaf, we've spoken about the trial of faith. We've spoken about the trial of wealth. We've spoken about the trial of power. And we have, talk, we have spoken about, in, the, in our previous episode, the trial of knowledge, which is the story of Musa and Khidr. So, this is the end of the story of from Surah Al-Kaf. I call you call her as I was talk fully. Walakum. Assalamu alaikum. Warahmatullahi wa barakatuh.